the message I want to share with you is this. First Kings 17 it speaks about Elijah uh, surviving in a time of famine. Now Elijah came on the scene and he stopped the rain with a word from the Lord. Well, he spoke against the Baals, the evil. Elijah said, as surely as the Lord live and I live, there will be no rain. And the rain stopped. But the Lord said to Elijah, I want you to run and go and hide because Jezebel gonna want to kill you. Lord Jesus. So in God hiding the man of God, he said, I'm going to let you drink water from the brook. And I'm going to send ravens, in Jamaican terms, drunk, oh, to bring meat and food to you. Now the Bible said, and the Lord commanded the raven. Lord Jesus, touch your neighbor and say, God is a provider. Touch your neighbor and say, don't watch the bringer. Just watch who send it. Because mm. sometimes you watch who carry it. But it's not who carry it, send it. Sometimes you're in a situation in a cave. And you want a breakthrough from God. But your mother can't carry it. Your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband can't carry it. But God have a way to send somebody with a miracle. Lord Jesus Christ mm. <laughs> and sometimes we look at who's carrying it in order to receive it and if we don't like the carrier then we don't receive the package but God is able to do God commanded the raven to feed the man of God hiding him from Jezebel watch this when the brook dried up the Lord said to the man of God now come out of the cave and go to Seraphat but watch this I have commanded a widow a who a husbandless woman oh Jesus Christ she is going through a famine in her life because there is no water there is no food there has been a famine god is sustaining the man of god in a cave but now he's sending the man of god to a widow to feed him when he went down there he saw a widow and he went to her without telling her the Lord sent him. I want you to get this now. Them some of you teach, some of me teach. He asked her for water. Remember, the brook dried up. So he's coming into town thirsty. Jesus Christ. So now he's asking a widow for water. Now the widow see a stranger asking him for water. She has no choice but to give him water. Why? Because the Lord has commanded her. She doesn't understand or knew that it is God. But now she moves by faith. And said, water, I can find a little to give you. But watch this. Then he said to her, wait a minute. On your way. See the test here now. Bake me a cake. And bring in your hand. Oh, Jesus have mercy. She said, you stick up here. As sure as the Lord live and I live, me now tell no lie, me I talk the truth. I only have a morsel of meal and a little big gill of oil. Lord Jesus. I plan to bake a cake for me and my son to eat. And after we eat it, I am expecting. 
expected to die because the famine is so great and I have no one to give me nothing. Everybody is looking out for themselves. So I am preparing for dead after I eat my last meal. After leaving, Elijah went to Zarephath where God commanded a widow to sustain him. I want to focus more on the widow rather than on Elijah in this message. For a widow in the Bible is typical of the church. This woman survived the famine by first being obedient to the word spoken by the man of God and secondly gave, uh, given satisfactory uh, the little oil and meal that she had. She gave it. She what? Gave it. She never ate it. She Matthew Henry in his commentary notes that increase comes to the widow not in her uh, need or in her good time but in her giving it's not in her eating it was in her giving it's not in her receiving it was in her giving some people are too busy storing up for rainy day that they are not able to not even attend church anymore Hello? The woman saw the man for the first time, but because God commanded the woman to bless the man. And the man is the man of God. God sent him to the woman, and God commanded the woman to feed him. Watch the difference now. God sent and commanded the crow to feed. The man and go about them business. God send the drunkard because if he sends your brother, your brother is going to tell your sister and your sister is going to tell her friend and eventually somebody is going to know where you are and let out your secret. So God sent a drunkard with the meat and the bread because nobody is going to watch where the drunkard is going. Nobody care about a drunkard going in into a cave with food. I wonder if you don't get what I try to say to you. Sometimes God will protect you from some people. That's why God hide you in some place where nobody can. And God knows who to send to feed you. God knows who to send. If God ever sent some people to feed you, them are going to take it, tell you. If God ever sent some people to bless you, tomorrow them are going to tell everybody, say, them do it for you. You don't chat to me. But because you are God pitney and you are blessed and highly favored, God knows who to send you, where to send you, and why he must send you. Now the situation is, it looks unfair to you for God to be sending the man of God to a widow is, who is already in need, but she has a seed. She is in need. But she has a seed. Don't eat your seed. Plant your seed. Even when you're going through a famine, you must be a sower and you will become a reaper. If you never sow, don't expect to reap. When you sow, it is a sacrifice. Why? Because you have to wait until it grew. You have to wait until it bear. You have to wait until it mature to get it. Touch your neighbor say, you might have to wait after you sow. But when you sow, your reaping days are coming. I wish I can talk to somebody. How many of you have a grain of corn and you realize one grain of corn cannot fill my belly? But if I get out in the field and plant the one grain of corn, the amount of corn I'm about to get in less or more than three months. You're not talking to me, somebody. Leave your voice and tell the devil he's a liar. 
I'm going to sow my seed even when it's a famine because I want my blessing to be multiplied in abundance from God. The floodgates of heaven is going to open but if you don't plant it you ain't going to reap it. Somebody give him praise. Touch your neighbor say neighbor don't eat it yet sow it first and watch it grow lift your hand and praise him can I talk to you but anything you have is enough to give God Isaac was in a famine but the Bible said he planted crops and when the Lord blessed him Hold a minute, hold a minute. He reaped a hundredfold. Hello? When he planted the grains in a famine country. Remember, famine are gone. But the last is still here. Some of you want to lift up from some place where God put you just because like of famine are gone. But God said, don't move until I move you. And if you trust me, I will sustain you. God sent the man of God into a cave. And when the brook dry up, God said, now move to town. I have commanded a woman. He commanded the raven. Now he's commanding the woman. But watch the difference. The raven comes with the bread and the meat and give him and go. No problem. But the woman is at a place where she is praying to God because she knows God. She says, as long as God lives and as long, so she knows God. But her husband is dead. She has no source of income and she's at her last meal and God knows it. But what God also knows that in her mind she's getting ready to die. And so God says, I'm going to choose this woman to bless her in the midst of famine. But in order for her to receive blessing and life instead of curse, I'm going to send you to her to take what she has in order to supply her needs according to my riches in glory. Oh, I don't know if some of you can understand that. Huh? The, unlike the crow, the woman is in a desperate situation that only God can change. Uh oh. May I go too deep? Many of you must realize that you're caught in a situation. Sometimes life or death. Man cannot change it because man has got you worse than what you have got you. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're not talking to me. <laughs> but Jesus knows all about your troubles and if you call on Jesus he's going to send your helper but when he sends your helper he wants to make sure that you're obedient and that you're faithful to his word too many of you come to church and not doing what God asks you to do including giving your life but you wish to God when you go to embassy, you get a 10 year figure foreign, go live your life, have your job, and remember God. You're not shot to me. You're not shot. You're praying for it. You're at your last, but God already knows what you need. And He will supply your needs. But He's not supplying unless you become obedient, unless you hear the word and respond to the word. The woman would not be blessed until she bring the cake. Present to the man of God. Watch the man of God eat the cake. And then go look in her empty barrel to see what comes up in there. Talk to me now, man. So a pastor says, the woman had a choice. Eat and die, give and live. Another minister said, if your present resources cannot meet your need, then turn it into your seed. 
Yes, my friend, the uncompromising believer in Jesus Christ will be nourished in your time of famine. For God has put a special mark upon the child of God and the people who obey his word. It is God who is commanding you to come into a place where he can bless you. But if you refuse to come into that place, but still expect God to bless you, it's going to be only for a while. Talk to me now. Finally, in 1 Kings 17, 17, we are told that the woman's son became ill. Watch this. Huh? What are you? And the sickness was so sore that the boy died. Why? Because the woman prophesied death in, all, in her home. She said, my son and I is going to die. And eventually, the son, be careful what you speak over you and your family and your children. It... The woman experienced the death. Lord God. Hallelujah. But God remembered this woman who had planted in the time of famine and gave her another miracle raising her son from the dead because the man of god was in the house god, god almighty you're not talking to me not talking to me the man of god is in the house and when the man of God is in the house, you shall not die, but live and declare the word. Somebody praise God. Are you ready, church? Not only was food provided for her and her family, but health and life was added to her home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One must know God. Know God. God said, when you go through this storm, I will be there. When you go through hurricane, I will be there. If them put you a sea bottom, me the right there with you. And if them bury you in a grave, I'm gonna be there with you. Somebody not talk to me. The Bible says you must give and it will come back to you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. You little hypocrite. You mean like star up a tree. You not dropped nothing from last year. But you have come a breakthrough for miracle. No, no, they are for you. You little carabasa. Loose me up in here. You think I some miracle go? If you go embassy, you care money. If you go hobby a man, you care money. If you go liar, you care money. If you go doctor, you care money. If you go a bush, you care money. But you come at church and left your money. And I talk about man of God love money. I wish part you forgive your seed. God know why you cow. God know why you goat. God know why you calf. God know why your furniture. God know why your man. God know why you care. God want what you have. And when you give him what you have, he will give you what you need. Loose me up in hell. Worship. Somebody praise God. Lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Some of you when you are dead. And when doctor tell you say you're done. At that time you come at church. But pharmacy reach out to you. And you remember say he was wounded. For my chance. He was bruised. You're not talking to me. Touch your neighbor say lip on the word. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Feel the Holy Ghost. Our God wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health that's the will of god for our lives this woman natural source of provision in her form of her husband was cut off can i preach here either husband died she became a widow and this caused her to look to the heavenly husband who is Jesus. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Your husband gone. Your boyfriend gone. 
your family gone the job gone but if you sow God is gonna provide a breakthrough if you release it you're gonna be blessed you don't need a doctor you don't need a lawyer you don't need a peacemaker Jesus said I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory somebody praise God you need to learn how to lean on Jesus give him the glory yes dear friends can I end it here the famine or wilderness is up on you you have got through hell but God somebody said but God but God has a plan for your survival touch your neighbor say neighbor you're gonna survive it all the hell you are going through all of Jezebel won't kill you but they can't touch your purpose they cannot kill I feel the Holy Ghost somebody lose me here lose me here give God the glory give him the praise worship the Lord lift your hand and say I I shall survive I will survive famine are gone but men are dead out of it Makosaba. poverty are gone but I shall eat the fruit of my labor somebody praise God lift your hands say me now I'm broke again me now I'm empty again my store basket can I prophesy now to somebody can I prophesy to somebody this is what the Lord said to tell you hear the word of the living God are you ready for thus said the Lord God of Israel your barrel of meal shall not be empty somebody not shout to me if you give God what God wants your barrel your bank book your relationship your money bag your bank account somebody now hear me will never will never go broke lift your hands and say Lord anything you want me I go give it because my barrel will never be empty your neighbor go hungry your friend I go hungry but you not dead for hungry God shall supply oh, somebody not. watch you not praise God hallelujah hallelujah touch your neighbors excuse me I'm hearing a prophecy neither will your jar of oil run out touch your neighbor say now run out when God bless it it can't run out basket full overload somebody lift up your hand and say Lord open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain let it rain let it rain let 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 give him the glory your oil can't run out your flower can't run out your you know what me preach your bang book can't run dry give god some might give god what god want sow your seed plant 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 a lot of preachers Rosa, the man of God prophesy he said if you do what you say you're gonna do and bring it and give me as sure as the Lord God the Lord said to tell you touch your neighbor say the Reverend Stuart word is a word from God God send the man to the woman when him reach down there him realize he's a widow with our last meal but him still take it and name it and then he prophesied he said as sure as the Lord 
God of Israel said to tell you your burial will never be your oil will never run out as long as the famine Touch your neighbor say, can't run out. It can't run out. If you give God some, only for the last one you have. The Bible said there was a little boy with five loaves and two fish. But when Jesus take the five loaves and two fish in the basket and him lift it up and bless it, it start multiply and he fed five thousand more people near and there was still twelve baskets left over the woman had only a muscle and God sent the prophet to the woman house for the woman to feed the prophet when the prophet reached, the woman had only enough for she and her son. The man of God said, give me still. After she released it, the man of God said to her, go look in your store basket. As long as the famine is, the Lord said to tell you, you'll never run out of blessing. Even when death came to her house, resurrection also came to her house because she sowed the seed. And if somebody hungry, come at your gate, feed them. If somebody naked, come at your house, close them. God will bless you with long life, health. You all think. Hold on. Brother Never, answer me the question here. Did Elijah pray for the woman? Did he lay hand upon her food and pray for it? He was so hungry. As she carried coming, he said, Lord, bless the food. He said, No, go and go bake your cake. The woman said, What do you Go and go bake, go look in your barrel. And when she grew on her, she said, Ah! barrel full if God can command a drunker to feed the man of God two times a day and if God can command a widow who had nothing to bless you so that God can bless her praise the Lord again praise the Lord praise the Lord you know I it is my first time here and um I have experienced the breakthrough over and over and repeatedly. The first time I heard about Mark Stewart, um, I went and I bought the breakthrough package. And I, before I bought the breakthrough package, I have the last $3,500. And I bought the breakthrough package and there was a little red cloth comes with it to put in your purse. And I did just so. And when I did so, oh my God, it was abundantly blessing. Another time, I had the olive oil. And before this, this testimony, when I bought the first breakthrough package, I called Mark Stewart and I told him my experience. And he said to me that, you know, 
don't worry yourself. Things are going to happen for you. And I bought it in November. And by December, I got married. And my life changed right around. <laughs> However, after, one day I was at my home because I, I live alone. My husband lives overseas. And I wasn't feeling well. I had this um, gastroenteritis from when I was a baby, right up. And most time when it took me, I had to be in the hospital. Or I found myself the next morning in the hospital. So while I was there the night when I took sick, just a few months ago by myself, I couldn't even get up off the bed. I couldn't even move. I couldn't even pick up the phone to call my husband. And eventually, a spirit come to me and said, what about your olive oil? And I said, but God, I can't even get up to get the olive oil. And, and the spirit said, try move off the bed to get the olive oil. That was 2 o'clock in the morning. And when I tried to pull, up, pull to get to the olive oil, I opened it and I just sip a little tip of the olive oil. And believe you me, I have to pinch myself to, rea to, to, to realize that I am not sleeping. So that's another miracle. That's another breakthrough. So again, Sunday, Mark Strott was saying, he, Reverend Mark Strott, I'm sorry. So he was saying that we must write on the paper and put our request. And that's exactly what I do. I'm sorry again, Pastor. And when I did so, eventually I heard exactly my request being said by Mark Strott. So that's another <laughs> Reverend Mark Strott. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Last week I come here, I was sitting right over there with me and my son. Because last week, Monday when I come here, not make eight days since my son don't pass his feces. And I'm telling you, he was going through some rough pain, you know. His belly did not swell, but it just flat, flat line. And for eight days, you know, eight days he did not pass his feces. And Pastor was there preaching and preaching and preaching. He come over there and just look like this. And just call him like this and he stand up. Pastor just lift his foot and touch him on his tummy. And believe you me, said the day not done. Before my son called me and said, Mommy, me pass me feces. Who could it be but God? Who could it be but God? Thank you, Jesus. And from that day until now, my son is just passing his feces two times, three times for the day. Who could it be but God? When now come on church, you come with a clean heart, man. Come receive the man of God.